When it comes to filmmakers on YouTube, there's a lot to choose from, almost an endless supply. But there's one in particular who stood out to me as having a uniquely authentic style mixed in with a quality of filmmaking that honestly feels like somebody who spent more than 25 years in the industry. And the reason that's impressive is because that's pretty much the amount of time that this person's been alive. His name is Nathaniel Drew. Now, originally I wanted to do a deep investigation into every little nuance and element of what makes his style unique and recognizable, but instead I'm just gonna show you how to steal it. Sorry, not steal, pay homage to. There's so many things that I think Nathaniel does to allow his style to stand out as unique and recognizable. The way that he constructs a story, the way he frames his shots in a messy but beautifully organic cinematography, but I'm gonna be focusing on just three elements of how Nathaniel edits his videos. And in each one of these, I'll have a technique that's tangible to go along with it, and I'll walk through and show you in the editing software exactly how to replicate it. But I'll also not just be focusing on the how, but also on the why because I think that more than most YouTube filmmakers, it's obvious that he puts a lot of energy into thinking through why he's doing what he's doing in every little detail. Yes, I am a silhouette in front of a cityscape because I thought that would be a cool visual metaphor of the speed of modern life. So strap in, and if you're ready to learn, hit the like button and subscribe to start episode two of our series breaking down the editing style of YouTube filmmakers. Now, Nathaniel doesn't necessarily have one thing or one technique that he goes back to every single time. For example, the way that he works with and displays his text changes from time to time, but that's where the why becomes so important. Because even though there's things that are constantly changing, it still all meshes together and feels the same. And in order to understand why, we have to look into probably the most fundamental piece of Nathaniel's style, which is that he's always adding movement to his elements. In every video, he has a sense of constant movement and flux. Nothing is ever really still. Even when he shows a still frame, it's got energy, motion, and life, even if it's incredibly subtle. And even though Nathaniel's a filmmaker, that's technically just an avenue for him to get to his larger goal of exploring ideas. He seems to take pride in showing that he's not ideologically locked into any position. Instead, he's always learning and growing and changing and exploring. And the visuals he chooses to show lines up with that idea. Even when showing something as simple as a piece of text, when normal and static feels like a deviation from his style, which more often appears something like this subtly moving, subtly glowing, with a tiny but visible flicker. It feels like the text is moving and searching, just like Nathaniel is. So let me quickly show you how you can get this effect in any video editing software. Now, I've actually shown how to get this effect before in Premiere Pro, but in order to give it the true Nathaniel Drew feel, we need to add a little bit of a tweak. Take your text and hold Alt or Option and drag it above itself. Now on the bottom layer, add a Gaussian blur and set it to around 15. So we've got a tiny glow now, but here's the kicker. Let's move this top text way up and let's duplicate this bottom clip onto itself again. And then set this glow to about 35. Then do it again and set it to about 50. And do it again and set it to about 100. And before you know it, now we've got a glow that almost has an overexposed type of feel, which is a reoccurring theme in his text. Next, in order to give it a slight flicker, we need to add an adjustment layer right underneath the top text layer. And on this adjustment layer, add the transform effect. Keyframe the opacity, and let's grab our pen tool, drop this menu down, and create a bunch of new points along the way by holding Control or Command and clicking. Change these points to vary anywhere between 100 down to 93 in a somewhat random fashion, and now we can see that we've got a little bit of a flicker. But to really make it feel like his, we can use it against a background, but not just any colored background, but instead a moving texture. I've downloaded this one here, and I've left a link in the description so that you can grab it for yourself if you want. Place it down underneath, and now we've taken our text from this to this. Not bad, eh? But just adding this text alone doesn't get us the whole Nathaniel Drew style, because if you take a look at this shot, for example, we see there's something else going on on top of this infusion of texture and movement. So in order to understand, we need to look at how Nathaniel brings his ideas into the frame. Now, I think this is the quickest shortcut Nathaniel uses to make his ideas feel real. Now, what do I mean by bringing your ideas into the frame? When you're making the kind of videos like he does, talking about everything from romance to capitalism to feeling like an imposter in your career path, you're ultimately faced with this problem of how do you take this nebulous, non-physical concept and show it in a visual medium? Now, I know that some of you might be thinking, no sh that's filmmaking. But that's the point. In filmmaking, you have an infinite number of different ways of representing your ideas, and not all of them work. So what does Nathaniel do that obviously works? Well, one thing that I see him go back to time and time again is to make his ideas feel like they're in the world around him by putting his text 
in the world around him. This can be something really simple like playing with the blur to mimic depth of field within your frame, or animating your text to match the speed of an object that's moving, but there's even simpler ways that I can think of that you can use. If I just slap down my text in the frame with the rest of my footage, it doesn't necessarily feel that amazing and like it belongs. But if I then take that text and change the blend mode from normal to something like screen or overlay or even something like difference, we immediately change that text from something isolated to something that's interacting with the footage in every pixel it touches because it literally is. You can also make your text feel like it's in the space around you by literally placing it behind you. All you have to do is plan out your shot with your text above your footage and then either mask around the text layer and inverse it or duplicate the footage layer above the text and mask out the thing that you wanna be in front of your text. You can even play around with multiple ideas like blurring for depth, as well as having a cutout behind you to really sell this effect. But you can take it even further. In this shot here, we can see that he has a shot with some really subtle camera movement. Effects like this can really make your shot have some amazing life and energy, but it feels like it would require some intense 3D camera tracking, but it doesn't have to. Now, in case you did wanna learn all about 3D tracking inside of After Effects, we actually recently put out a video all about that, but I also wanted to give you an option for how you can get the same type of effect inside of Premiere Pro with no 3D tracking required. Take your shot on a tripod and then add your text in the location you want it to appear. Go through all the work editing and animating it to be how you'd like. So for me, that's adding the glow effect we created before. Now nest that set of clips and text together, and on this nested layer, you can add movement. Keyframe the position to start in the place that you filmed and then push in by scaling up over time. This keeps the animation you give in the text while at the same time moving them in perfect synchronicity with your footage, making it feel like they're in the same world. And you can take this a step further by adding some camera shake with a preset from Motion Array. Just drag and drop it onto your nested sequence, and now you've got a scene where it looks and feels handheld, but the text still looks like it's perfectly in the same world as your footage, helping to solidify the idea that whatever you're talking about is actually with you. And you can see that in this example, for instance, that Nathaniel uses this technique along with some subtle masking to help sell the effect even more. And you can see that he's even taken a similar film texture that we used before and put it over top of everything using a blend mode like overlay or screen. And that's what's cool about all these effects is that they're so easy to take and put into a new scenario. So I think you can start to see how Nathaniel puts so much thought into every piece of what he's doing. But if we're talking about what he puts thought into, I think there's one more thing yet that represents this best and not enough people think about it. And it's that his audio is messy and profound. Now, when I talk about his audio being messy, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. I'm not saying that it's low quality. In fact, it's actually amazingly high quality, but it's not perfect. And I think that there's a big difference between those. And it's no wonder because audio is one of those things that if done perfectly, no one's gonna notice it. And if somebody does notice your audio, it's usually because there's a big problem. So what does Nathaniel do in this respect that sets him apart? Well, one thing that I've noticed specifically is that he's not afraid to be messy. So many times I've seen him recording audio with a lav mic on location where there's a bunch of things happening around him. Normally to a lot of filmmakers, this would be really challenging because you have to take into account all the things that are happening around you that might be distracting because you're the center of focus and you want people to pay attention on what you're saying. And things happening like somebody playing music nearby or somebody walking by you on the stairs can act as a distraction and take away focus from the things that you're saying, but Nathaniel's perspective on this seems to be more or less to just embrace it. And I think this comes from his core perspective that he's not the center of the universe. His focus on exploration and trying new things lends itself to this idea that there's an entire world going on around him. So filming himself on a train with the clattering of the track, or in a coffee shop where people are talking all around him, or when some dude on the steps just casually walks by him, it's not a distraction, it's a part of the experience. What we're really talking about here is a really thin line between two things. One is amazing, perfect, crystal clear audio that isn't distracting, but also being able to place that into a larger world where it feels like there's something bigger than just yourself. Maybe you've noticed here as I've been talking that you've been able to hear things like cars and traffic and people bustling outside, almost like there's an open window where you're able to hear this outside world around me. But if I'm to take this camera here and show you what's outside my balcony, it's actually not a city, it's nature. But it created a certain feel, didn't it? And one of the easiest ways that you can create that feel for yourself is by using ambient sound effects. And the best part about this is how easy it is to create because all I did was go to motionarray.com and download some ambient sound effects. Edit together your video and your audio dialogue and then place this ambient track underneath everything. And now what you have is ambient noise that's happening underneath everything, but in a very consistent and controlled way. And in a bit of a contrary way, some of these odd things that are happening outside of your dialogue helps to string together all of your audio and makes it feel like it's a lot cleaner. 
because now even if you have cuts in your footage and your audio track isn't completely perfect, you now have this consistent track that's running beneath everything that makes it feel like one continuous take even though it wasn't. Now, up until this moment, we've been describing Nathaniel's style as messy exploration, and that's cool on its own. But if someone's not careful, that can easily turn into aimless wandering without direction. And that's not what Nathaniel's videos feel like. They feel really grounded and secure, and like they know what they are. And a big reason for why that's the case is actually still to do with sound effects. Because almost every time I've seen Nathaniel use sound effects in conjunction with text, he almost always chooses to use a typewriter. Why is this important? Because when you think of a typewriter, you think of somebody having a very clear vision for what they want to say. Given the sense that every word has permanence because the typewriter doesn't let you go back and edit. There's no backspace. Once it's written, it's there in ink. There's permanence to this sound, and it illustrates that in the middle of this journey of messy exploration, Nathaniel's clearly thought through exactly what he wants to say, and he's letting us know that as the viewer through the use of a simple sound effect. I think a big reason that Nathaniel's style stood out to me in such a bold way is that even though things are changing, from his font choice, to the use of framing, to the music, to the templates and animations he uses, even though it's not always the same, it still feels like it is, because the whole point of Nathaniel's channel is that Nathaniel himself is changing. So experimenting with different styles doesn't feel off-brand, in fact, it feels like exactly who he is. Always exploring a new perspective, or the daily routine of another person, or what it means to be happy from another person's point of view. So what that means is that when he does something cool, it's not just a flashy technique used to increase audience retention. It's actually acting as a window to better tell us what Nathaniel himself is thinking and feeling, which is the whole point of his videos to begin with. It's all coming from a singular, central, authentic place. It's all coming from his raw vulnerability and his sense of exploration. And that's the big reason why, as much as I've tried to throughout the course of this video, the core piece of his style can never really be stolen. But if you still wanted to try, I've left everything that I use to mimic his style from over at motionarray.com. I think it's important to point out that I don't think that you necessarily should steal another creator's style, but I absolutely think that you should try to mimic it, because that's one of the best ways that you can learn and grow. And with Motion Array, there's literally no limit to how much you can try, because a Motion Array subscription gives you access to literally everything on our platform, which is more than 800,000 unique assets. Test them out, see what sticks, and see what lines up best with your creative style. And there's never been a better time to try this out, because right now we're having our holiday sale where you can get an extra $50 off a Motion Motion Array yearly subscription. And if you've made it to the very end here, let me know which creator style you want to see me break down in the next episode of this series. Thanks.